I'm sitting right here. Mini Ninjas is a game I've wanted to check out for a while since I got a free copy from the Square Enix store a few years ago. I never actually checked it out because at first glance it seemed kinda simple, and I didn't think I would enjoy it too much, but I was really glad to be wrong for this one. I should have probably trusted Square Enix more since they do publish some of my favorite series. Mini Ninjas is simple, but that's not a bad thing at all. You play as a ninja named Hiro, and his job is to restore balance to land and defeat the evil Samurai Warlord, which is basically the plot to every generic ninja story ever, but that doesn't really matter here. The plot is not why you play this game. But the plot did give me a bit of a Sonic the Hedgehog vibe, which is not something I expected to say about this game. The Samurai Warlord is transforming animals into evil samurai, much like Eggman turning animals into robots. Anytime you defeat an enemy, you free the animal. What's more unique in this game, once you free the animal, you can use magic to possess them and play as the animal, which can be anything from a rabbit or a chicken or even a bear, and you can use them to solve various puzzles or get an edge in combat. Combat is very simple. You have the normal hack and slash you would expect to have, as well as the use of shuriken and other ninja tools, including a neat hat which can double as a boat. As you progress, Hiro recruits others to join him such as the hammer-wielding Fudo and the flute player Suzume. Each has their own unique playstyle, and certain characters are more effective against certain enemies. Hiro has a skill unique to him called Kuji Magic. Kuji Magic is an addition to the game that not only ups the fun, but increases the replayability. You can obtain spells that let you possess animals, as I mentioned earlier, as well as casting things like fireballs, tornadoes, or lightning storms. In order to get new spells, you have to locate Kuji's shrines, which you have a spell to help with, and offer them a flower to be given the new spell. Most levels have a spell or two, and if you don't find them, you'll have to replay the level to get them. There are many other reasons to replay the levels as well, whether it be to find all the hidden statues, potion recipes, or free all of the trapped animals. Since the game is short on its own, these goals add some length to the game. The only unfortunate part of the combat is with the boss fights. Upon finding the first boss, I was excited to fight a giant evil samurai, only to find out that I had to just trick him and do some QTE to win. But other than that, the levels are fun, give you some great environments to explore, and the combat is enjoyable. What made this game particularly enjoyable for me though, is its attention to detail. It has a lot of subtle cultural references that add a nice level of depth. Most games when casting spells will have the character mutter some random gibberish, but Hiro actually speaks proper Japanese. For instance, when casting a fireball, he says Hinotama no Jutsu. Hinotama no Jutsu! He says other such phrases with casting his other spells as well. If you can find this game for cheap, it's definitely worth your time. It's very fun, and although short, will leave you feeling satisfied at the end. Ah. This is Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Master on the Sega Genesis. Part of the long-running franchise by Sega, many consider this entry to be one of the best in the series. I don't have too much experience with the Shinobi series, but I picked up this game when I first got my Genesis, and this one is definitely up there, and may even be in my personal top Sega Genesis games. You play as a ninja named Joe Musashi as he fights against his sworn enemy, the Neo Zed, which I guess is some sort of ninja rival clan? They have a bunch of ninja minions called Bio Ninjas that Joe must defeat for, uh, some reason. Shinobi 3 is a side-scrolling action platformer that really emphasizes precision dodging and ninja action. Its controls are tight and very simple. A is for specials, B for attack, C for jump. You primarily attack by throwing kunai, which is a limited resource, however, ammo pickups are very abundant in the game. If for some reason you run out, you also default to a melee attack when you are close enough to your enemy. Attacking overall feels really good, and responsive. Shinobi 3 also shines in its platforming. Joe has a lot of abilities, just like a real ninja. You can double jump and also wall jump to navigate the different stages. Your double jump is timing based and will only work if you do it at the apex of your first jump, so you have to be precise to be successful. 
Attacking while in the air can also allow you to kick downward, and when you attack following a double jump, you unleash a Fury of Kunai. There are also item upgrades that make your kunai and melee attacks do more damage. Scattered here as well are pickups for ninjutsu magic. These include your typical screen clearing attacks, as well as temporary bonuses. You can select one of four different types of ninjutsu magic in the pause menu. Besides destroying your enemies, there are spells that grant you temporary invincibility or allow you to jump higher. I usually save these for the game's bosses, which require more strategy than just blindly throwing kunai at them, but still have a lot of health. The animations for the ninjutsu magic are very cool, and have some great fire, lightning, or explosion effects. The back of the game's box boasts that it has 25 crazy stages, but it's actually broken up into 7 districts that you travel to. Each stage is relatively short, but the districts themselves serves as the game's proper levels. You start out in a simple forest level, which you would expect for a ninja game, but as the game goes on, you see more modern levels that have enemies with guns, and then even further into levels with robots and monsters. It gives me a Contra vibe in how as you progress, the levels get more and more crazy. Shinobi 3 has a good balance of settings, and the Genesis shows them off very well, with its color shades and graphical layers that express the depth. My favorite is the parallax scrolling effects in the background that really show off the graphical design and make you feel like you're traveling somewhere. These are complex levels that do more than just have you keep moving right to go on. Many of the stages have secret areas that you have to be on the lookout for. Unlike the Nintendo Ninja game counterpart Ninja Gaiden, Shinobi 3 rewards you by being patient and exploring your surroundings instead of simply blazing through the levels as fast as possible. My favorite levels here are the auto-scrollers, like when you're on the back of a horse, or a jet ski. These levels are simply fun, and I love the little touches on how you can see upcoming enemy patterns as they zoom by in the background before reaching you. Shinobi 3 really is a treat. It's a game that has a lot more attention to detail than you would think going in. Its controls, platforming, and combat make it a great challenge while giving you enough strategic elements to keep on playing. And like most solid Genesis games, the game's soundtrack here is a real banger. If you enjoy this game as much as I do, the Shinobi series has a handful of entries in this classic side-scrolling style. As someone who traditionally prefers Super Nintendo, I have to admit that this game is a must-have for your Sega Genesis collection. From Software has a rich history of developing ninja and samurai games, including the widely acclaimed Sekiro. But we're taking a look at Ninja Blade, a game that was released a mere week before Demon Souls. If this game was successful, we could have been waiting for Ninja Blade instead. Ninja Blade was a game that was at a GameStop bargain bin that doesn't go for more than $5 but I saw the From Software logo and it immediately caught my eye and I told myself, how bad could it be? I had to decide between this game and Tenchu Z, but decided to play the game that was based off a new IP. You play as a badass ninja named Ken, and there's a story that has to do with an outbreak or some junk like that, but you really don't have to care about that. The story is secondary to the gameplay. I never have played many games that are as cinematic as this game, but I've seen it compared as a mix between Ninja Gaiden, Devil May Cry, and God of War. It is a hack and slash that incorporates quick time events into the mix. QTEs are an integral part of the gameplay and even show up in the cutscenes. Honestly, I could care less for QTEs, but this game makes them look so cool. I mean, look at this. also have to keep track of the swords you use in combat too. Some enemies have shields that have to be destroyed by the heavy sword and small bats that should be killed by the dual swords. 
One other weapon you use from time to time is a wind fidget spinner to get rid of the fire that may be in the way. Combat ultimately switches from normal hack and slash play to QTEs as the finishing blows. Graphically, this game looks pretty good as the characters and enemies impressed me for a 2009 Xbox 360 game. The only thing I was disappointed in was the fire in the backgrounds, they were a solid meh for me, and they could have looked better but they served their role. Difficulty wise, I find this game to be fairly generous, as if you fail a QTE it only puts you back a few moves and are allowed to retry as many times as needed. This game offers a normal and hard difficulty for the action and QTE separately, so you can make the action normal and change the QTE difficulty to hard if you so desire. I have a feeling this game is on the lower half of From Software games in terms of difficulty. This game is really crazy and fun. I couldn't put it down once I started playing it and I'm going to try to beat it later this week. Sometimes you can't go wrong with picking up a cheap game, as they may exceed your expectations. This was a steal for $5.